My name is Linda. I'm in my 50s, leading a leisurely life, juggling a part-time job and hobbies. My husband, William, celebrated his 60th birthday this year and switched to a contract basis, continuing his work at his own pace. We have a 32-year-old son, Jack. Though his adolescence was a bit challenging, he now exhibits a sense of calm that's hard to believe. He's settled into his dream job and seems to be enjoying his single life living alone. And we have one more member of our family, my mother-in-law, Sue. Sue, who turned 90 this year, is spending her day in the sun, petting a cat on the porch. She's the very picture of a charming country granny. Three years ago, I was saved by this Granny Sue, and I think I'll tell you that story. I'm bringing my fiancé home on Saturday. One spring day, we received such a call from our son, and William and I were over the moon. After all, we'd always wondered when our son, who was at the right age, would get married. Of course, it's enough for us if he is happy, even without getting married. Still, we, who are likely to pass away before him can't help but wish someone to be by our only son's side. Linda, I can't find any socks without holes. Oh, dear William, look properly, and by the way, I prepared the macaroons for tea. What do you think? Macaroon? What's that? While we lead a rather casual life, we were bustling to make a good impression on the woman coming from the city. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law was leisurely drinking tea on the porch. Nice to meet you. My name is Nancy. The woman who came home with our son, Nancy, greeted us with a charming smile. The well-groomed black hair and white dress suited Nancy, who had a modest atmosphere, and we both had a good impression of her. Surrounded by the cake she brought us as a gift and macaroons, our first meeting went on peacefully. By the way, Jack isn't biologically related to you, right? Until Nancy started with that. Oh, you heard it from Jack. Yes, he has a different mother. It's a common question, so I answered as usual. His mother passed away when he was three. I married Linda when Jack was eight. My husband William naturally explained. I'm his second wife. To our son Jack, I'm his stepmother. Oh, Jack, it must have been hard for you suddenly having a new mom. Nancy sympathized with Jack, a look of concern on her face. At her response, I found myself slightly taken aback, but Jack swiftly countered. No, it was more like my request. I told Dad, I want Linda to be my mom, so please marry her. That's right. Linda was always very good to Jack, and Jack opened up to her. That's why I decided to marry her. You're exaggerating. Originally, William and I had a boss-subordinate relationship at work. Since we lived close by, we naturally became close, often commuting together. I had many opportunities to meet young Jack. Being the eldest of four siblings, I loved playing with younger kids and had become close with Jack even before I did with William. Jack took a liking to me, and that's why I decided to marry William. That's true. Is that so? Nancy responded, sounding rather nonchalant despite bringing up the topic herself. She seemed to have her own pace. Where's Grandma? Jack, having finished his snacks, looked around. She's out on the porch. Just as usual. Grandma? Nancy inquired, tilting her head in curiosity. My Grandma also lives here. She's a bit senile and is always basking in the sun. Oh. Say hello to her before you leave. Now, when are you planning to have the wedding? Nancy's eyes lit up as she replied. June 1st. Oh, it's coming soon. When did you two start dating? I added. Since last Christmas. Last Christmas? I found myself echoing her answer. Wait, so you haven't even been together for half a year? Is that a problem? Her previously twinkling eyes suddenly dimmed, which made me anxious. N no, it's not like that. I think it's pretty quick. Any reason? William chimed in, covering up my panic. She wanted to have a wedding while she's still in her twenties. Oh, I see. I can understand that feeling. That's right. My parents also want me to get married quickly and have a child of their own blood. I see. There seemed to be an implication in her words. I wondered if I was the only one picking up on it. 
Well, you two are adults, so we won't interfere. But remember, both marriage and the ceremony are your responsibilities, okay? Yes, Jack nodded confidently. Nancy looked at him adoringly. I need to stop being so nervous about their young love and support them as a mother. Apparently, they had a hotel reservation for the evening, so they were leaving before dinner. Sue, Jack is leaving now, I said, tapping my mother-in-law, who was dozing off on the porch. How old is she? Nancy suddenly asked from behind me, causing me to jump. There stood Nancy, smiling sweetly. She just turned 87 this year. Oh, that's a relief then. Relief? What was she relieved about? Hey, old lady. Old lady? I was baffled by her transformation and being addressed as old lady. She was mocking my confusion. I have no intention of taking care of a stranger like you. Once you've seen us off, I'd like you to leave this house. Eh? You can attend the wedding, but know your place. Jack's too kind to say it, but I don't think he wants his stepmother pretending to be his real mother at his wedding. Nancy spouted venom and slowly approached me as if cornering me. Was her smile always this terrifying? Despite her eyes not smiling, her mouth curled unnaturally. Nancy, let's go. Jack's voice called from the entrance and Nancy's face instantly brightened. Okay. Remember, old lady, I won't pamper you once I become Jack's wife, so be prepared. After whispering in my ear with a low voice, Nancy walked away with a spring in her step as if she was about to skip. Left behind, cold sweat trickled down my cheeks. I realized that Nancy had never once called me Linda, but kept addressing me as old lady just like I'm a stranger. I couldn't sleep that night. My mind was in a whirl. The next morning, William noticed my pallid complexion. What's wrong? You look down. Do I? Feeling lonely because Jack is getting married? Yes, I am. He's the son I cherished and raised. I'm sure Jack will often come home with grandchildren. His bride seems to be a good girl, William assured. Yes, she does. Indeed, Nancy had not been harsh towards anyone but me, Jack's stepmother. I never expected her to take care of me, and I'm fine with Jack inheriting everything, but we never discussed this with Jack. I thought I'd established a relationship with him no different from any other parent and child. But what if Nancy was right, and Jack was considering my future a burden? If I just leave this house, could Jack build a beautiful family with her? In the evening, I head out to the porch to bring in the laundry. My mother-in-law, Sue, is sitting there with a cat in her lap, gazing out at the garden. Next to her, there are a variety of store-bought cookies and candy lined up. Oh my, looks like you've got some more offerings here. The neighborhood kids brought them over. <laughs> I bet they use their pocket money to thank you, Sue. You see, around these parts, Granny Sue is something of a local celebrity. Sue's regular spot on the porch overlooks a road across the garden, so it's easy to strike up a conversation with passers-by. This is a small town, and folks from the neighborhood sometimes pop in for a chat. Somehow it started that when people talked to Sue, their problems were solved. People say that if you consult with Granny Sue, she'll give you advice as if she's seen it all herself. Rumors like that spread, and before we knew it, there was this urban legend going around that Granny Sue has clairvoyant powers. I really don't know how many people's troubles Sue has helped resolve. On the flip side, she's getting a bit senile, and there are times when a conversation doesn't really pan out. Still, everyone seems content when they leave, and some even leave thank you gifts like this, so she must be doing something right. It's a bit of a security concern, but it stimulates Sue, and either my husband or I am always home, so we let it slide. It's kind of fun to have an urban legend in the house. Linda? Yes. You don't need to worry about anything. That girl and Jack won't be getting married. What? Without me saying a word, Sue hits the nail on the head of my worry. It's quite a surprise. How do you know they won't get married? Just look at her face. It tells me everything. Her face? 
Indeed, the face she showed while cornering me was straight out of a horror movie. If I were a man, I wouldn't want to marry her. But I wonder if there's any chance for Jack to see that face before their wedding. Also, your daily deeds will prove themselves. Mine? What do you think I should do, Sue? Well, Linda... Oh, look at these cookies. They look yummy. Who gave you these? Oh, Sue. At critical moments, she'd retreat back into her dream world. Yet her words still lightened my heart. Sue isn't some supernatural oracle. My father-in-law used to run a business, but he was too trusting and got conned often. So she ended up handling all of the social affairs instead of my father-in-law. I think she honed her discernment of people during that time, and it's still with her. That's probably why she's always drawing people in, and why I trust her so much. Sue's words made up my mind. I won't intervene. I won't meddle in my son's marriage. That's the right thing to do. I've loved my son Jack with all my heart. I'll just support whatever he decides. If he ever comes asking for help, then I'll do everything I can to protect him. Even when I'm anxious and doing nothing feels tough, still, I decided to trust my non-blood-related family and carry on with my daily life as usual. I'm sorry, I think the marriage is off. In the middle of May, Jack, who had suddenly come home, shared this with a somber face. He seemed to have lost some weight since we last met in the spring. Sue's prophecy had quickly come true. While I was surprised, it also felt inevitable. What happened? You both seemed so happy. She had a debt, nearly fifty thousand dollars. Fifty? How does someone so young get into so much debt? She was spending it on designer bags and her favorite international artists. She often said she was going abroad for concerts or to buy designer items, but I never thought she was going into debt for it. That's intense. Did Nancy tell you about the debt? No. When we sent out wedding invitations to her friends and relatives, they all declined. Nancy blew up. Her reaction was so strange, so I discreetly asked her friends. They told me, she hasn't paid me back the money I lent her or she stole my belongings and boyfriend. Oh my. When I confronted her, she got defensive and said, it's low to snoop around other people's business. We couldn't talk it out, so I called her parents. They said, you're going to be a couple, don't dwell on the past. A real man would pay off her debt. What? And then she casually mentions her parents are in debt. Apparently, they used to be rich but seemed to have failed in their business. However, they couldn't lower their standard of living and have been living by repaying debt with debt. And she's saying things like, it'll all be fine if we support each other. Jack, she's clearly planning to leech off of you. Right? That's why I've decided to call off the engagement. I was a fool not to realize she was such an insincere woman. It seems like she was rushing the marriage to keep me from escaping. Jack, I expect a dispute over the cancellation fee for the venue and our broken engagement, but I'll fight it myself, considering it as a learning experience. I only want to let my parents know that the wedding is off. I'm sorry. I know you were looking forward to it. A powerless laugh escapes Jack, a sight that wrenches my heart. Then my husband William, who had been quietly listening to our son's story, finally speaks. Never mind us. Your happiness is what matters most. If you're in trouble, come to us any time. Isn't that right, Linda? William is asking for my agreement, so I respond with a smile. Of course, you're our precious son. Mom... It seems Jack has been keeping up a strong front all along. Tears well up in his eyes, a sign of relief. Blood relations don't matter. I decide anew that I will always stand by my son's side. A few days later, when William was away on business, Nancy, with a devilish expression, came storming into our home. It's impressive that she made it all the way to our countryside home by herself. Nancy, as if all her pristine image was a lie, glares at me with eyes filled with hatred. I flinch slightly at her openly hostile demeanor, but rally myself thinking of Jack. Linda, you must have manipulated Jack. I haven't said a word. You liar. 
The gentle Jack I know wouldn't call off our marriage. It seems you've done enough to merit it, haven't you? All I wanted was to make Jack happy. Plus, only I, a princess, can free the prince from the witch's curse. Despite telling him countless times, he can't seem to wake up from the witch's brainwash. Prince, huh? And witch? Well, I don't mind if she's referring to Jack as a prince, but a witch? Who's she talking about? It seems in her head, stepmothers are always the witches leading princes astray. And referring to herself as a princess, isn't she embarrassed? Even so, I came to understand that she was speaking ill of me, even to my son. Just because we don't share the same blood. When Jack came to talk about the breakup, he didn't mention that. He was probably being considerate of me. A princess who scams her friends out of their boyfriends and money? That's laughable. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Jack is, well, he's my ideal prince. He's handsome, tall, kind, smart, and works for a good company. He was supposed to become my hero, protecting me from unpleasant people who blame me. Only a princess like me suits Jack. Just as I found it difficult to argue while she was praising my son, a stern voice thundered from behind. That's enough. Sue, my mother-in-law, who was supposed to be on the porch, was now standing in front of Nancy. What? Why are you here? Don't disturb me. Nancy, who did not expect my mother-in-law to intervene, also looked puzzled. There was something strange about my mother-in-law today. Should I call it divine? Her eyes were more wide open than usual, and she had an unusually powerful presence. Slowly, my mother-in-law held up a hand mirror, which she had somehow gotten hold of, to Nancy. Do you see a princess when you look at this face? Uh... Seeing her own face, Nancy became disconcerted. Perhaps she couldn't do her usual convenient mental gymnastics in front of the sudden mirror. There must have been a terribly distorted face reflected in it. To me, it looks like an evil witch. You are so sinful. You wouldn't find happiness even if you married Jack. It's a pity. Oh, what a pity. It was not anger but pity in her eyes as she stared at Nancy. Her pure sympathy must have been too much for the prideful girl to bear. Ah! <laughs> she ran off from the front door, her hair flailing, crying and wailing. I also felt my strength drain away, and I involuntarily crouched down. Oh, that was scary. Sue, thank you. Saying that and looking up, I saw my mother-in-law smiling down at me. You have a good face, you know. Her crinkled warm hand enveloped my cold one. The wrinkles around your eyes, on your hands, they're proof of the smiles and effort you've put into this house, Linda. Oh, Sue. Indeed, my mother-in-law always recognized the effort I put in. When I decided to marry my husband, there was quite a lot of opposition from my husband's family due to our age difference and the fact that I was to become a stepmother. But Sue was the only one on my side, saying, Linda's face shows her heart, her smiles are genuine, and her hands are those of a hard worker. That's why I became part of the family with my husband and son. Linda, my mother-in-law's clear eyes looked into mine. Is breakfast ready yet? I nearly lost my balance from surprise. It's almost time for dinner, so just wait a bit longer. With a face half laughing, half crying, I took my mother-in-law's hand this time. As he had promised, my son Jack managed to break off his engagement on his own. The cancellation fees for the wedding were negotiated to be covered by her side. Even though Jack managed it on his own, he had consulted a colleague at work who introduced him to a good lawyer. I think it's also a testament to Jack's ability to have built such helpful connections. Nancy never dared to set foot in this house again. When the discussion about the broken engagement took place, it was only her parents who were desperate to make Jack pay a large amount of compensation. She seemed to be out of spirit, as if her soul had been drained. I guess my mother-in-law's words and the sight of her own horrific reflection must have come as a shock. Three years have passed since then. 
Jack seemed to have become weary of women for a while, but it looks like he finally found a woman he wants to marry again. She's a nice person who positively reflects me as a stepmother, saying, It's great that Jack has two wonderful moms. Sue looks pleased, too, saying, She has a nice smile. Over 90, Sue is still as cheerful as ever, soaking up the sun on the porch. Her hearing has gotten worse and she doesn't seem to catch much of what people say. But still, people continue to come to visit Granny Sue and talk to her. She doesn't seem to give advice anymore, but it doesn't seem to matter. Everyone leaves with a smile on their face. Sue is like a sunny spot. She has a mysterious power to brightly and correctly illuminate everyone. My son's wedding is just around the corner, so please stay healthy for a little longer, Sue.